Good afternoon, dear saints, brothers and sisters of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Hello. I want to first say to you, brethren, thank you for your patience with your servant. Um, been not doing well health-wise lately. Um, like I said in an other video, it's getting worse. <clears throat> little by little, and I'm doing my best to uh, try to, you know, to live healthier. But, you know, as we all know, it's not as easy as some would have you to believe. But I want to say thank you to you, brethren, for your patience with your servant. Um, past couple of days have not been well. So, thank you. And also, too, before we begin, um, for our beloved brother from Oregon... Hi, brother. Uh, like I said, thank you for your patience. Um, your servant hasn't been doing well the past couple of days. But um, as for, and this is an inside thing, uh, you'll see this. I know you will. As to your wonderful question, uh, your question is one that ought to be shared with the body of Christ, and Lord willing, that will be addressed in its own video. But I wanted to say this to you personally, dear brother. Uh, the short, uh, you, he had asked a question about uh, Lucifer in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> the short answer to your question is, brother, no. No. Um, I believe that Lucifer knew all along what was what. I just think that he waited for the opportune time to do what he did. Okay? The short answer, no. Um, like I said, I think he just, you know, Satan hangs back and waits for the opportune moment. But uh, Satan, I mean, I think uh, all the angels knew from the get-go what, what was what in the Garden of Eden. Uh, so well, we will get into that in its own video because that question, beautiful question you asked, by the way, brother. Like I said, I didn't respond because I have not been doing well. But that, that question deserves its own attention and it will be Lord willing. And also for your other thing that you sent me I have long believed as you are being now made aware I have long believed as you are now being made aware okay love you brother keep uh, keep dear uh, please keep our dear brother from Oregon uh, not the one whom some of you may instinctively think of, okay? That man is not our brother. But uh, please keep our brother from Oregon in your prayers, okay? So, anyway. Questions. Questions. I was asked, uh, of course, uh, recently, too. Uh, it's unfortunate that my health is getting worse. <laughs> but uh, ask just some incredible questions. And, uh, of course, the dear brother who asks incredible questions, of which I expect no less, did so again. And the question was in regards to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Okay? Until the day star come. Okay? We're going to address that. So please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures at what we're going to be um, going through today. We are going to have a expository video on 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 14 on to verse 21. Okay, we got the we got some stuff that we're gonna go through, okay? In answering this question. So please get the authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. You need to read along with me because you know why? I'm fallible and I make mistakes. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So read along with me. Do not trust what I tell you. Trust what this says. Trust the scripture. Okay? Trust the scripture. Trust the scripture. That is, this is our standard. 
Man, dear brother, as you are being uh, shown now, man is not our standard. And when man becomes a standard, oh, wow. So please, read along with me. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to be reading verses 14 on to verse 16 to start. <clears throat> Knowing that, uh, uh, let's read verses 13 on to verse 16 to start. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, referring to the body, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. It's interesting how so many of us saints can conveniently forget the things that sometimes we are to remember, even though we have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, dwelling within us. Okay? Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shewed me. <laughs> Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Now in this context, we see remembrance mentioned twice twice mentioned okay twice mentioned for we saints for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty Yes. Cunningly devised fables. Yea, hath God said, just believe and receive. You're elect because of your skin color. You have to go to the church that Christ founded. Okay, you've got to stop sinning. The evidence that you're saved is that you speak in unintelligible uh, blah, blah, blah. fables. Fables. But our focus in this context is remembrance. Remembrance. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, 10 unto 16. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Now there's a distinction between speech there. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Just believe and receive. <laughs> One God and three persons. Okay, you got to go to Christ's church that he founded. You're black, therefore you're a Hebrew and you're a part of the elect. Okay, you got to be at the church building every time the doors are open. Okay, you've seen the Lord, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all right. And his lips that they speak, no guile. Guile. Now, what we have just done, evil speaking is giving another Jesus. Same with guile as, you know, guile uh, in a means of deception. But also, I, I got to mention this. Um, hey, bloke. <coughs> you know, bloke, the next time you're going to mock that one dude who was trying to exposit scripture and using profanity... Will you at least, bloke, I know this is difficult for you, will you at least use a verse of scripture instead of just going on your stupid little tyrannical tirades, please? Remember, okay, it's supposed to be the suspension of disbelief there, bloke. Please at least try to use a verse of scripture here and there when you're talking about that wicked guy who is just trying to exposit. Uh, scripture and cursing. Okay, will you please, for your own sake there, you, you lovely little devil, you, at least, okay, remember, for suspension of disbelief, for the poor people that you've got duped. <laughs> I don't know how, but anyway, anyway, 
but evil speaking. Like I said, I, I heard this, um, heard of this one guy, and I'm going to name this guy's name. His name is Dave, apparently. He, he was going through scripture and every once in a while just dropping a casual F-bomb and uh, other words as if it were no big deal, and he's quoting, trying to exposit scripture. <laughs> and, you know, the one guy, Loke, was, you know, doing a Captain Obvious. He's also a devil. It's, it's amusing. Devils rebuking devils. But it's like, yeah, dude, at least use a verse of scripture, okay? Anyway, <clears throat> verse 11. Let him eschew evil, just like Job. And do good, and there is none good but God. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where it says, If any man defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. If any man, that includes yourself. So, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. <clears throat> do you, you are aware, saint, that we as saints can do that which, which is evil thought of foolishness is sin. Remember, sin, evil. Evil, sin. Okay? Watch out for people who try to blur that distinction. Sin is evil. Okay? Sin is evil. Keep that in mind. Okay? But yes, even we saints can are capable of evil. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Remember! And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good. And there is none good but God. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. <coughs> having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. You know, in the scripture, and we're going to look at this, where we're told to be instant in season, out of season. There may come a moment where the Lord will orchestrate a situation when you're least expecting it, like you're pumping gas at the gas station, or you're in Wally World, or your your mind is focused. Okay, gotta get this, get back home, and then all of a sudden, a, a situation opens itself up, and within the context of that situation, it goes into a direction of seriousness, where someone is asking you, saint, the reason of the hope that's in you, and you're caught with your pants down. See, this is why I'm an advocate of you, saint. I don't care where. I, dude, you, you're going out to put out the trash. You're going out to get the mail. It's like, well, Brad, it's, shut up. I love you. Shh, be quiet. Be quiet. It will only take you, saint, one time to be in a situation where you find yourself unprepared not instant, in season, out of season, and you botch an opportunity because your mind was elsewhere and you were not prepared. What does it say? And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Again, this doesn't mean that we have to answer every question. But when, you know, the hope that is in us, what's the hope that's in us? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is our hope. Okay? I'm telling you. I spare you. I spare you. Lord orchestrates something. There you are unprepared. It's like, well, I got to get home. I got to get home. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. You got to deal with this. Now. It's like with your death. You have this, that, and the other thing. And all of a sudden, your time is like, oh, boy. Here, it, everything else is put aside. Because you're about to go home to your reward. 
nothing else matters. Everything is like on the, it's like, okay, I was, it's like, okay, I got to get this done. And the next thing you know, heart attack. Next thing you know, stroke. Now, in context of being ambassadors, it should take you only one time for you to botch that. And that crushing weight, that guilt, especially when the Lord's like, you know, I kind of did this and I wanted to use you. You blew it. That, unless you've been in that, and there are several of you have, that have, that ought to light a little fire underneath your buttocks to always be prepared as much as able. And not Cain, brother, okay? Jude. Jude, three on the six. Jude, three on the six. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, common, available to all, okay? You got to watch out for these guys. Uh, the Pentecostals are notorious for this. Well, the gift of speaking in tongues isn't for everybody. Not everybody gets to see the Lord. Not everybody. And this is true in fact that there are different uh, offices that the saints fulfill. But salvation is common to all. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons today. So when you got a Pentecostal coming around, well, I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. They're going contrary to this verse with the common salvation. Common, available to all. Okay? It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that is not Christianity. For there are certain men crept in unawares. They look like us. They sound like us. But they ain't us. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation because they had already made their choice. Some of them, a lot of these free gracers are infiltrating, knowingly preaching contrary to the truth to lead you astray. Okay? Ungodly men defines itself. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ when God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Uh, this verse right there is a perfect go-to verse to uh, refute easy believism. Okay, free grace, antinomian, antinomianism. Because they're ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Listening to that disgusting, putrid, vomitous devil, Dave or whatever, uh, and I didn't listen to him, I, I just happened to... You know, what, what are you talking about now, bloke? Who are you, who are you attacking in the long line of people? That's all you do. And then it's like, wow, listening to that guy trying to ex, uh, exposit scripture and dropping curse words. That's like, and you never even use one verse of scripture. Now, you might have, I ain't giving you all my time. God forbid. So I skip. Okay, but anyway, anyway, anyway. I will therefore... And also, too, I have yet to meet one antinomianist who is not a Trinitarian. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, once knew this. How easy is it for us saints, even though we have the Father within us, how easy is it for us to sometimes forget? It's like your mortality, like I told a brother, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, it's like, you know, when I have a bad night, it, it's, it's remembrance on to me, you know, that it's like, hey, you know, I could go at any time. I'm dying. And I could go at any time. What are you going to do today? What are you going to do today? Huh? Hmm? It's easy for us sometimes to forget and to lightly esteem things. Let's be, little, let's be adults here, brethren, sisters. Come on. Come on. Come on. See, see, brother, uh, brother from Oregon, see, that's the thing. That's the thing, you know, lightly esteeming. With longevity, these Christians seem to lightly esteem and adopt this been there, done that mentality. Now, there are those of us who have been walking with the Lord 
a, long, a, a while, yes. But see, we don't bring our longevity and experience as a means to rub in your face like the individual you are talking about there, brother, and we won't mention names. Uh, he, he, he banks on that. Well, I've been there, done that, and I've done this. I've done, Boasting himself. See, the longer you walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. But a lot of these Christians, the longer they get, the more pompous they seem to get. And they, they, you know, and experience brings hope, all that, yes. But see, that is not something that we as saints, the longer we walk, are to hold as a badge to rub in someone else's face, just like that individual does, as you are seeing, dear brother. Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Paul had a thorn in his flesh to keep him humble. And Paul, only as a last resort, would go to, well, okay, I've done this, I've done this, and you've compelled me to, but okay, you, yeah, I've done that, okay, whatever. It was never to the forefront, never to the forefront that you see. With the, you know, the Lord saved me 16 years ago, okay? I'm not rubbing that into your face. At least I don't, I hope I'm not, and if I am, a brother or a sister will rebuke me. Okay? So let's continue. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept their first estate, and the angels which kept not, their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Second Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2. See, and that's, that's the danger of distraction. That's what these devils do really, really good. They want you to distract you from what the Lord will have you to do and pay attention to them. It's like with that, that whole stupidity about the, the uh, skin suit thing that happened years ago, which has doctrinally, scripturally been, you know, you know what they brought up. It's been proven, okay? It's been proven, okay? This flesh, all flesh is sinful, okay? It's been proven, okay? Yeah, it's been proven. But see, it's a distraction. Our enemies, the enemies of our Lord, excel in this area where they will bring up something like something really small and blow it up to wide proportions to try to get you off track and pay attention to them. Okay? Okay? Sometime, and there are times when you do have to address these idiots. But most of the times, it's like, do whatever. Do whatever. Okay? <laughs> uh, what, what, what was here you got out, huh? Oh, 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 I got to be careful and go crying to mama there. For, uh, 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 on verse 16. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall, all, who shall be able to teach others also. Our dear young brother, who, um, who one day will, I believe, I hope, okay, but, um, you know, we, te you know, putting, giving out truth there that others may also rise up as the Lord will call, we're going to address that too, um, who will go on speaking the truth of the gospel, of the actual Jesus Christ, okay? See, the gifts that each, and, each of us have been given, brother, sister, are not meant to be hoarded. They're meant to be given unto others. Okay? Never forget that. Keep in remembrance. Keep in remembrance. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. See this? No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. And then they bring up some worldly, carnal kind of thing with the guise of religiosity, Christianity, and try to distract you with it. See how that works? And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Study to shoot thyself approved unto God. And we will be quoting that today as well. The husbandman that is laborer must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. The Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, meaning the one that he preached, not one that he came up with himself. Okay? Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. Now, elect's sake is not what Calvin says. Not what the black Hebrew Israelites say. Okay? God elected the cross, the way of the cross. And going the way of the cross is broken of your self-righteousness, taking responsibility, contrition, and having the hell scared out of you. And when that happens in a fell swoop, you, the lesser, calling on the greater, Lord save me, you can't wait to do that. These, uh, these Christians don't understand that because they're lost, okay? All right? Again, there are unfortunately saints who want to call your, yourselves Christians. Why, I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. But uh, a majority of the Christians out there, they are, you know, they're not saved. <laughs> they're not saved. They don't gravitate. They can't understand the concept of that you're not good. Anyway. They can understand the concept, but it just doesn't go from here to here. Okay? It stays here. But elect means you go the way of the cross. You are of the elect because God elected the way of the cross. Okay? Calvinism video will be in the description box. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes. If you're a saint, you're part of the elect because you went the elected way of the cross. That's what that means, okay? That they may obtain, salva obtain the, the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him, dead to the world and dead to ourselves. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him, we deny him, all he also will deny us. And as you know, every time you come to this verse, brother, I know it might be a little monotonous, but to uh, write the same things on to you is uh, not grievous, but is needful. Okay, because why? How soon can you and I as saints forget? Hmm? How soon can you and I as saints forget that we're dirt? How soon can you and I as saints forget that, hey, that one guy you're mocking out there, that was me once. How soon can one us saints forget that we are to be servants, not to be served if this ministry has blessed you? Why don't you give, get started on that? There's a time and a place for that, yes. But when you're constantly reminding people of that and boasting your credentials, you're, you're seeing that, brother. But bless your heart. And I don't mean that in the southern way. Let's continue. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Salvation is not ours to lose. It is of the Lord. You are sealed with the Lord. You are a saint. You can't lose what isn't yours to lose. It's his salvation. Okay, he is salvation. And if you can lose salvation, that means that the Holy Ghost will depart from you. Therefore, you are not sealed. And that is not how it works today in this dispensation. The way you deny the Lord today is he says, be not conformed to this world. Then we forget conveniently and we get conformed to this world. Okay, with no wicked thing before our eyes. Oh boy, that, 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 that's a commonality uh, between all us saints. Unless you're one of these stupid... Uh, sinless perfection idiots 
and I'm being very kind. When you got antinomianists that can refute your belief like that, that's bad. That's bad. Okay, that's really bad. But okay, you put something before a wicket before your eyes. You have nightmares, and then things happen and stuff like that. You need to be reminded. You know, let me be reminded of how frail I am. Okay. You know, like I believe that's in Psalm 90. Okay. We need to be reminded, brethren. We need to be reminded. So, you can deny him in what he tells you to do. Deny him in an opportunity. You, you know, you can deny him by not being prepared. Well, Brad, I keep the sword on you. Well, Brad, I, I have a... So what? So what? Hey, winter is coming. Wear a bigger jacket. Okay? So what? You got to carry around with you. Uh, maybe have a nurse with you, a backpack or something. Who cares? Who cares if you're going to get your uh, mail, taking the trash out, have the scriptures on you. Well, you might, well, Brad, they're in the car, but they're not on your person. If they're in the car, that that's that's a good start. You could be in Walmart. It's like, hey, look, look, look dude, uh, I, I, I don't have anything. Will you come with me and I can show you and uh, go to my car? Well, I ain't going to do nothing perverted or weird. Come with me, okay? Um, that I don't know. I don't know if that works, to be honest with you, because I'm always I always got a sword on me. I always got a sword on me, okay? So I'm 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 just being honest, you know. But I mean that might work, you know. You're in Walmart, Lord opens up something, and you don't have a sword in your pocket or somewhere on you, and you be like that, dude. Okay, th those are great. I, come with me. Come, you can step just by my car, and I can show you, okay, that, in the heat of the moment, be armed. Be armed, brother. I know for us here in America, it's a luxury. It is. It's a luxury to have scriptures galore, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a luxury. It's a luxury to have the, the amount of scriptures. And, you know, i got to be getting rid of some of these. Uh, more on that later, you know. But, you know, giving it to people who actually need them and want them and will read them. I understand, you know, that it's a luxury to have more than one set of scripture. You only need one. I get that. I get, I get that, okay. But regardless, that one set of scriptures, dude, take it with you. Okay, and besides, if it's one of them monster things, they, it, it could be, you know, that's knife proof. That'll stop a knife. So there you go. Okay, <laughs> let's continue. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. See, he can deny us grace, mercy, compassion, um, provision, fellowship, sleep, but salvation is not ours to lose once he saves you you're sealed you you ain't going anywhere except to be with the lord okay once saved always saved once saved always saved is not a license to sin you wicked antinomianist pond scum let's continue of these things put them in remembrance Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Oh, that, that's another good, uh, uh, because people like to say, um, well, you gri griping about Christian is, no, there is a profit to it. Okay, there is a profit to it. Line up with scripture. Okay, that's what we're supposed to do, okay? Video on that will be in the description box. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. 
workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain. But, 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 but. Like that, that the one guy, I, and like I said, I only caught part of it, uh, of the bloke's video, because uh, I can't, I won't give that guy more than 10 minutes of my time. I can't, it's just that, that, that disgusting, and he thinks I speak disgustingly too, so we're all good. <laughs> I hate that man, and he hates me. Oh, no, no, he doesn't hate me. He despises me. <laughs> and I, yeah, brother, I, I'm not convinced. I do think despise is worse than hate, but we can talk about that later. But anyway, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. A little won't hurt. Hey, you're saved. Hey, the more you sin, the more grace you get. Hey, we're not under even the morality of the law. Okay, so what does it matter if we sin a little? You're being too extreme. Profane and vain babbling. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Verses 17 under 21. Proverbs 22. 17 under 21. 20 to come. Work with me, fingers. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. Where are the words of the wise? That, that's a no-brainer, okay? For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord and not a man. Yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, he is. Jesus is, yes. Man, a fellow man, okay? Fellow fallen man, okay? Anyway, let's continue. That thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have I not written? <laughs> have I not written to thee excellent things and counsel, counsels and knowledge? that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou, might, look at this, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Be ready always to give an answer to every man who asketh you the reason of the hope that is within you. Second Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4, which I have on several videos. I like to use this as a closing to remind us. 2 Timothy 4, 1 on 4. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the mucus. You needed to know that. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, alive, and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom. Note the difference. Appearing and his kingdom. Appearing and his kingdom. Okay? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. To brother, sister. Keep a sword on you. I, okay, you have it in your car, you run, okay. Okay. Especially if you got one of them little ones, you know, KJVs, you know, with the one that you fit in your pocket. There are some that are that big and kind of cumbersome. So what? Winter's coming. Hey, get yourself a bigger jacket. Okay, but you, you, you got the scriptures in the car. Like I said, I, I, I don't know. Because like I said, and I'm sorry if this sounds bad. I, 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 always got a, I always got a sword on me, man. I do. I had that happen once. And 
that's all it took for me. Hopefully that's all it'll take for you, brother, sister. But it's like, again, who cares if you got to carry around this, you know, whatever. So what? Okay, some of you who used to smoke cigarettes used to have your, your pack of cigarettes, your lighter, and this, that. You have your hell phone, you got your wallet, your keys. Why not have your sword with you? I, I like that the brethren that um, we converse with, uh, you know, in a, you know, our little thing there. Uh, none, none of them bring that up with me, and, and they know better. Because even though I love you dearly, I, I, I'll get on your hiney about that. I can, and I can do that because I put that into practice myself. Okay. So anyway, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Dude, I'm telling you. Should only take you one time. You know, you're in the Wally world. It's like, okay, I gotta get to eat this, this, this. All of a sudden, bam! You're bam! Bam! <laughs> but all of a sudden, you're presented with something that, number one, you weren't expecting, and number two, you're not prepared for. Because you we're, we're just like, okay, I gotta get these eggs, I gotta get home, got this. All of a sudden, hey. Hey, you're presented with a situation. And the situation takes a drastic turn of seriousness for a testimony unto the Lord. Now the Lord can provide. Ah, absolutely. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, And I've talked to people who have supposedly memorized the whole thing of scripture. Eh. Mm. Mm. You could have some parts memorized, but I, I truly do not believe that there is a man out there who could have a whole remembrance of capacity of Scripture always. You know, that's why you, it's, it's a living, it's the living word. That's why you need to read it to refresh. Renewal of your mind, you know. Anyway. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long, long suffering and doctrine, not feelings. Like I said, it should only take you one time. When, and then after you've botched it because of your own preparedness of not being instant. Remedy! Set of scriptures on you. There you go. You, and, hey, okay, you might not be able to answer the actual thing there, but hey, Spirit of Truth, He will guide you into all truth. You got the sword on you, and you're in a situation, they're asking you something that's like, okay, Lord, okay, you know, bullet prayer like Nehemiah. It's like, okay, Lord, I, I, I don't know about this. I, you pull out the sword, it's like, well, I got this word, and the Lord, lead me, guide me, and I have a, you know, there's usually, Got this nagging suspicion if that happens to you, brother, sister, and you're prepared like that, at least with the scripture, and they're asking you about something that you're like totally oblivious to at the moment, you pull out that sword, man. You you, you start swinging this around, bro, sis. Um, that that that's as I have experienced. You pull out the scripture. Uh, someone who, you know, I've seen guys, when I take out my little sword and show it to them, I've had guys, like, stop mid-sentence, and they're like, oh, that was creepy at the jewel over there, man. There, there was one hammock guy harassing the uh, Jephthite woman, you know, with innuendo, and it kind of stepped in and was talking to him, and I showed him the scripture. That guy was like, oh, and he's like, I, I, I got, he ran off. It's like, whoo, up. Oh, Okay, all right. That that kind of stuff happens. See, you 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 bring this out. See, devils might have that same thing, but see, <laughs> you know what? If anyone could use a gun, but you need to know how to use the gun in order for it to be effective. You need to know how to aim. You need to know where to shoot. Okay? You know what I'm saying. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap 
to themselves teachers having itching ears. And nobody wants to hear that you're no good. Nobody wants to hear that you got to fear God. Nobody wants, except saints, as lo I mean, you lost people, you Christians, you don't want God telling you what to do. Look at the antinomianists. They don't want anyone but themselves telling them what's acceptable. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. There you go. There you go. All right, now, 2 Peter 1, verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from... For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Acts 4. Acts 4, verses 8. Acts 4, verses 8 on the verse 13. Then Peter, this is this dispensation, by grace through faith, this dispensation. Okay? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we be, if we this day be examined of the good deed done in done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Whose name? Whose name? Yahasha Wushi Hushi Yamaka or what? Uh, Yamaha, whatever. No. No. Jesus. Jesus. Jehovah saves. Jehovah saves. So I people, you know, these uh, um, the black Hebrew Israelite guys I've, that I've encountered, really, well, Jesus is a white man's name. It's like, you stupid idiot. <laughs> you idiot. Okay, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ was not Caucasian. Okay, Jesus Christ is Shemitic. Okay, not Japhethite, not Hamite, you idiot. Oh, that one, that one just, you know, uh, Jesus is a white man. You shut your mouth. You stupid, willfully ignorant twit. Shut up. No. <laughs> the, the gospel of Christ. Oh, that's a white man's time. What? What? Are you, did, did, shut up. Shut up. That is, that, that and I, I've gone off. I have, I, I have, um, I have. I've gone off on, uh, I think, two or three of black Hebrew Israelites before. Um, I let the one curse me like crazy for however long he did, but that was a different thing. That, that guy was actually a saint. Uh, but uh, anyway, you know, it's like, I, I have, unfortunately, and say, hey, see this? Okay. Yeah, I, I, that, 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 that's one of them little things that just really grinds me. What? What? Jesus Christ was not Japhethite? nor Hermetic, but of Shem, of the Hebraic people. Take it. The Hebraic people came of Shem. Shut up! Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Yes. Neither is, there a, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And of course, brother, 
What's the natural, the immediate place that you go to with the follow-up to that? You know, Philippians 3, 5 on to 11. Remember. Oh, 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 yeah. And uh, here, this will be in the, the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which also, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ, uh, video in the description box, is the, the mind, the heart of a servant. To serve. Christ himself, Jesus Christ himself, didn't come here to be served, but to serve, to give his life a ransom for many. And see, brother, like I said at the beginning of this video, um, there are these Christians, which I am not, um, who have been walking supposedly with the Lord for year and year and year. They soon forget that they are frail, that they're just a man, and that they're nothing. But see, when you get, you know, when you've been feeling like Paul, when you've been used. You can you can puff yourself up, and especially when you got these these devils who come along doing rah rah rah, emulating you, looking like you, trying to sounding, having the physical movements, mannerisms, tonality, even that, that some of you know who I'm talking about. I mean that that's creepy. That 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 there is creepy. And, you know, someone who's on paper against that, that that's got to kind of notch up, 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 up. But remember, the mind of Christ was what? The mind of a servant. We are servants, brethren, sisters. And because we serve, we in turn will be served. But when you put your being served first, like a lot of these Christians do, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And what were we reading to? Right there. Now uh, I'll find them. Um, uh, uh, Jesus is the Lord. There was that whole nonsense thing about. Um, um, where is that, Corinthians, whatever that is. About just because someone could say, Jesus is the Lord. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. <laughs> that was proof to salvation. I, for a while, was, uh, for quite a while, actually, was duped into that myself. And the Lord got me out of that right quick. And a lot of devils were exposed for what they really were after that. And tried to keep it up. But the, the scriptural evidence is irrefutable. But... This simply is telling you. You know you people, you lost people who die and eventually going to stand before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment? Aaron Ra! Aaron Ra! Dade Murphy! That one crazy British girl, lesbian, whatever, uh, oh, atheistic, whatever. All those three names. I, I can't remember that one. Oh, uh, uh, Christy, stupid head, Christy Burke, okay? All these people are going to, and I'm sure, you know, they hear, give, oh, I'd never do, uh, when you're standing before the very one that you denied, that you rejected at the great white throne of judgment, you, you don't have fear of the Lord, you will then, and by then it'll probably, it'll be most likely too late for you, but that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Hey, Aaron Ra, hey, Dade, hey, stupid head. You will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ eventually. 
Oh, I could hear Dade and his profanity, that, that imbecile. Such a waste. Such a waste. Because that guy does have a brain in his head. But such a waste. But anyway, you're going to, you're going to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You're going to, going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord when you're before him at the great white throne of judgment. All you atheists, all you devils, all you guys who, you know, all things are lawful for me. and you're, You are eventually going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord. Because he's the one who's judging you. And see, your, your belief on that is irrelevant. That's what's going to happen. You'll find out. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out. Too little, too late for the most of you. Now, the verse that was in question. That is in question. Not in question, but what the brother asked. I, I don't have my uh, health phone with me or else I would quote it. But... Uh, verse 19. Oh, wait, verse 18. Verse 18. We skipped that one. Excuse me. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Very quickly, Matthew 17, verse 9. Sorry about that. Almost skipped uh, verse 18. Matthew 17, verse 1 on verse 9. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, S-U-N. And his raiment was white as, as the light. And behold, there appeared with them the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. Okay? Moses and Elijah. It's not Moses and Enoch, or it's not Elijah and Enoch. It's Moses and Elijah. Those are the two witnesses. Taking, talking with him. Then answered Peter, you know, I'll never deny you. But yet he was the first to deny the Lord and that deny him atrociously three times. Then the Lord looked at him. Oh, I can't even imagine. Well, yeah, I can. Even though I haven't seen the Lord with my own two eyes, like some of these stupid Pentecostals claim to have. But it's like, you can like, you can feel when the Lord tells you of something, then you go ahead and do it. And then it comes to pass, it's like, I told you not to do that. Big, I told you so. But, you know, yeah, Peter. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Son of David, King of the Jews, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. I might have that backwards. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Okay? Simple. One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. God, God is a lot bigger. Uh, the, the wrong God, okay, you stupid. I, I say that with love. Uh, wrong God, okay, you, you, got, you Trinitarians, okay. You, you put God into little boxes. He's, God is a lot bigger than you think, okay. I know some of you have a, when I say that, but that, that is the reality. Because that is the reality, that doesn't mean we should... Uh, fear to speak in that reality because of what the devils do. Keep that in mind. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And uh, what are we reading to in this? Nine, verse 9. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. Now, also got to comment on this. Note the three tabernacles. Okay? But yet, Here's Jesus. Here's one God. Okay? And the thing about the tabernacles was kind of like refuted in verse 5. Hear ye him. Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead, 
bodily. Not one God in three persons. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Trinitarians I have seen try to take that very verse and twist it to their, to meet their ends, to meet their means. But no, no. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And yes, the Jesus only movement started by Pentecostalism, I believe. You know, Jesus only, okay? But remember, the Pentecostals are modalists that Jesus was at first God the Father uh, in the Old Testament, then he was Jesus himself, and then now Jesus is... No, that's modalism. Uh, that's, not, that's not the true God. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You see the Godhead being separate of, of itself in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, okay? It's not modalism, all right? All right? But yes, the Jesus only movement, there's its inception. That's where they, it's like Jesus only. It's right there. Jesus only. Okay? And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh, be risen again from the dead. And boom, there it is. And. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. Okay? Just kind of wanted to, to mention that. And also, too, while we're at it, John 12, want to mention this another time here, where uh, a voice spake. Okay? John 12, 23 32. And Jesus answered, answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man... Son of Man, okay? Son of Man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Very good verse before the death, burial, and resurrection to show people like, hey, you need to be broken of your self-righteousness, not just believe and receive. That's heresy, okay? He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And if, if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost was the spirit. God the Father, the soul, the word made flesh, body. Very simple. Very simple. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. I believe this is very significant for the reason that when the redemption of the purchased possession happens, come up hither. We saints are going to hear, come up hither. But those who are not of us are going, I believe, I truly believe, that when the redemption of the purchased possession, number one, Satan is not going to be able to hide that. Okay, he's not. Why do you think he, he let out the thing about aliens? Okay, oh, oh, that, 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 that's a good one. That's a good one. They're here, yeah. Do you believe in aliens, Brad? Uh, like the predator, the xenomorph? No. No. No, I don't believe there is intelligent life on other planets. No, I don't believe that at all. Scripture doesn't prove that at all. Okay? But what about these um, devils? Uh, fallen angels? Okay? Satan is not going to be able to cover up the redemption or the purchased possession. So he has left, he's got all these little options. The alien thing. Suddenly. And, be, and I think there's going to be saints uh, maybe driving a taxi and sudden, in a blink of an eye, uh, uh, you as saint could be in front of a couple people and they blink and you're gone. Okay. Satan's not going to be able to hide that. But we're going to hear come up hither. But the rest are going to hear it say that it thundered. So I believe this is showing us that when the redemption of the purchase possession happens, we're going to, obviously, we're going to know because it's like, 
Oh, hey. I, oh, boy, the judgment seat. You know, John fell at his feet as dead. It's like, oh, boy. <laughs> uh, brother says, I hope you're not behind me. I really, do, I really hope you're not behind me. <laughs> I see, brother. <laughs> I, I thought about this the other day. It's like I said, hey, hey brother Floyd. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't thinking. Hey, brother, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Anyway, let's continue. Jesus answered and said, "This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of the world be cast out. And if I, and I, if I be lifted up." From the earth will draw all men unto me. And that doesn't mean that everybody is going to be saved. That doesn't mean that everybody's saved and they just don't know it. Stop it. No, no, no. Common salvation. God's salvation is there. It's common to all. Okay? But not everybody is going to be saved. Okay? Oh. Anyway, excuse me. All right, 2 Peter 1, now, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Yeah, because we have the complete canon of Scripture. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, take heed, remember, as unto a light, that shineth in a dark place. Really quickly, spur of the moment. John 3, for the death, burial, and resurrection. John 3, 19 unto 21. And this is the commendation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Yes, Christians don't want God telling them what to do. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Light of Scripture will uh, reprove you, expose you of the things of your heart. That's why a lot of people don't like the Scriptures, but like prefer a Bible that suits them. <laughs> Stupid. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay? Whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. The day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. One second, one second. All right, I, I, oh brother, I'm going to read the one part of your question here. Um, you quoted uh, 2 Peter 1.19, okay, of course, I didn't ask you about this because you know how it goes. Here's what you asked. Quote, we know that the day star is Jesus. Yes. But what is, but what is until the day dawn? Is this talking about being born again like in 1 Corinthians 4 or 5 until the Lord come? Okay. Very beautiful question, of course. Now, when you look at this, Okay, now remember what we've led up to? Remembrance. Number one, who is Peter addressing? Saints, right? He's addressing saints, saved people. And we saw from 13 up till now two mentions of the word remembrance. Take heed, remember. As we've already said, as we already have expounded, that it's sometimes easy for us saints to be neglectful sometimes. But for, for the sake thereof, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 4, okay? 1 on the 5. Let a, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Whosoever... Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 
But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment, yea, I judge not mine own self. And of course that means, what he's talking about is how flawed, how fallible man's judgment at its best, man at his best state, is altogether vanity. So the judgment of man apart from God is flawed. Okay, flawed. Man's judgment is inadequate. Man's judgment is inept. And you know, it's, that's addressed in Romans chapter 2. He doesn't judge his own self because he knows his judgment in and of himself is flawed. Okay? Verse 4. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And you read for, uh, Romans chapter 7. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present in me. Where do you find the law? In Scripture. Okay, how does the Lord judge us? Through Scripture. Okay? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, until you're saved. You lost people. Okay? Your judgment, two lost people judging themselves according to their own standard, themselves, is flawed, vain, useless. Okay? You need God the Father dwelling in you who will lead you, guide you into all truth, the perfect standard by which you judge yourself first and others. Okay? That is clearly what this is talking about. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come until you're saved, who will both, who will, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God, which we already kind of looked at in John chapter 3. Okay, so this, and see, these devils will go to this to defend themselves, so you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Oh, you're right. God can judge you and judges you through the scriptures. But see, I'm a saint. I judge myself by this perfect standard. I'm judging you by this perfect standard. That's how that works. And someone will come to this to say, well, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Meaning, I can go on and sin and do whatever I want without judgment, without any recompense, with an S. That's obviously heresy. That's not what this is talking about. Okay? Obviously. Now, his question is that what this is talking about? Now, what we have in First Peter. Now, who is Peter talking about? Who is, excuse me, who is Peter talking to? He's addressing who? Saints. Yay, verse 13. I think it, I think it means as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Oh, how often you and I can forget <laughs> What we're supposed to keep in remembrance, huh? Uh, and where and where was uh, uh, where was, and verse fifteen? Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Okay. And then where he says in verse nineteen that ye take heed, that ye take heed. So what's, what is it with this verse? Day dawn until the day dawn. Day dawn. 1 Thessalonians 5. Paul, uh, Paul, Peter is addressing saints. Obviously. Obviously. Okay? Until the day dawn. Okay? Oh, oh, here. Oh, oh, oh hold on. One, one second. One second. I'm going to make, I'm going to irritate that heretic Scott. All right, yeah, I'm going to make a point, and hopefully that devil, wicked, heretic, Calvinist, pond scum devil uh, grafted into hell ministry, Scott, could see this. Uh, yeah, you wicked devil. Yeah. Anyway, 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 day dawn. Peter is addressing saints, is he not? Yes, he is. So, in context to what we have looked at thus far, he is talking on to us saints, things that we are to keep in remembrance, right? It's okay, yes, okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 4 and 7. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, You're not lost, okay? That that day should overtake you as a thief. Look at this. 
Ye are all children of the light. Now that's a lowercase l, but of the light. Who's the light? Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And the children of the day. Day star is Jesus. You're right, brother. Amen. Okay? We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Time for you to wake up. Oh, how often can you and I as saints, especially uh, when you uh, adopt this ridiculous, ludicrous mentality of the been there, done that thing, and you use that as a badge of honor to exalt yourself. Yes, we who have been walking with the Lord for a, a period of time, we have those experiences that we are to share with others. But it is never to be a badge of honor that we walk around with bravada. Paul brought it up in defense of himself as a last resort. Not as a mere scratch to puff up himself by like some certain people that we won't mention. Okay? Okay? I told you, brother, at the beginning of this, I have long, long suspected as you are being now a, being able to see. Anyway. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Uh, let's read verse 5 again. Ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. But sometimes we can behave that way. Because guess what, Scott? Oh. Yeah. God ain't holding a gun at your head, you idiot. Oh, you don't like this, huh? Huh? Yeah, you don't like that. Yeah. Satan ain't holding a gun to your head either. You, you. Yeah. <laughs> emulating wicked devil. Okay? You even sound like the guy from Maine. You wicked filth. Okay? You go off someplace. Beg your pardon, brethren. Anyway, let's continue. Okay? Therefore, let us not sleep in the night. Oh, wait. Let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And, and, and you know what? Um, in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, where you can see the Godhead in action, okay? Verse 4 on to verse 5 in Genesis 1. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. <laughs> Thank you, that was good. Okay? All right, now, Romans 13. Romans 13, and this, and I, I just, the way this is going to bleed in together like this is just beautiful. Romans 13. 12 on to 14. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Put on. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Lord rebuke you, you wicked, filthy, devil-teaching Calvinism. Put on. You got to make the right decision. You know why? God isn't forcing you to do what's right. Neither is Satan forcing you to do what's wrong. Oh, you don't like that, do you? Yeah, because it, it, it really gets uh, really drives a point home, okay? All right? You parents who have firearms, that's up to you to show your children to respect the firearm. That ain't my job. You understand? Go on someplace. Pretentious people, you King James Bible believing Christians. Go follow your man and grovel at his feet. Wicked devils. Not all of you, just a select few. <laughs> anyway. But put on. God doesn't force you to do anything. You have. You 
have to make the right decisions. Or it'd be like that idiot Scott tells you. You know, that's not even your fate. <laughs> I'm like I said, I wouldn't be surprised that that putz would come out with the mind of Christ. Like, hey, we got Christ's mind. I wouldn't be surprised if he does that. And Jake the jerk me, oh, amen, brother, all the way. Two peas in a pot of the devil. Anyway, let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Boy, you know, how often sometimes you and I as saints uh, forget. Isn't that something? Look at it now, 1 Peter uh, 1, 19 again. We have also a more, more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Remember, take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Peter is addressing saints. Okay? And the day star arise in your hearts. Now, the, the, I want the, the, the day star. Day star. Now, depending on the Bible you're using, not the scriptures, um, Luke 10. Luke 10. One verse. Luke, Luke 10, verse 18. Luke 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, Behold, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, I checked a few translations before this video. Um, I have not, I don't know. You never know in Rome. Uh, I am not aware of a Bible that says, And I saw Satan as a star fall from heaven. I have not. There might be. You never know. You never know the New American Standard, the Holman Christian Standard. Well, you never know with these Bibles. Okay, they're always changing and updating. So I am unaware of a Bible. That, that, this is the Scriptures. This is the authorized version. This is the perfect and errant, given by inspiration word. Okay, I am unaware of a Bible changing Luke ten eighteen. And hey, brother, if, the, if you know of one, tell, show us in the comment section. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay? But you know what Bibles like to do? They like to tell you that Jesus was the one who fell from heaven. Fell from heaven. The Lord just said, I beheld Satan fall from heaven as lightning. Like, fast. Okay? And you know what Bibles do? Bibles like to tell you that uh, Jesus fell from heaven. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Scriptures tell us, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Some Bibles say uh, day star or star of the morning or whatever. Bibles and some Bibles will put this in here, like right here. And this is a Cambridge, P, uh, pure Cambridge edition. Okay? Even here. What is that? What is that? Okay, okay, wait a minute. No, they're not making that reference. Okay, excuse me. But there are Bibles out there who put star in there. No. Lucifer was the son of the morning. That's what Lucifer means. It does not mean day star. Some Bibles have day star in there, morning star in there. Okay, some of the Bibles do. Okay, the scripture does not equate unto Lucifer, morning star, day star. Not at all. And see, when the Bibles that come from Rome do that, they will link to that Revelation 22, verse 16. Meaning, and they will tell you how, you know, that it was Jesus here. Okay? And allow the Bibles take out Lucifer and put morning star, son of the morning, day star, son of the morning, or whatever. Okay? 
uh, a majority of the non-King James doesn't, but a majority of them take out Lucifer, and they put Morning Star or Day Star there. And then they link it up with Revelation 22, verse 16. Wow, wow, according to the NIV, ESV, and the uh, probably the MacArthur version, he's a Calvinist. Uh, so if you were to read that in the Bible, wow, Jesus is the one who fell from heaven, claiming that I will be, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Revelation 12, 4, Revelation 12, 4, uh, I am not aware of star being affixed with the devil, other than in Revelation 12, and if I'm wrong, someone put it in from the scriptures, Jack, put it in the comment section, okay, but I didn't really look that deep into it, but the point is, Revelation 12, verse 4, here you go. And his tail. Whose tail? The dragon. That old dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan, accuser of the brethren. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And that, of course, is talking about Israel, not the disgusting... <laughs> Roman Catholic Mary. No, this is talking about Israel. Okay? And who came from Israel? The Lord Jesus Christ, God's Father. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Not, uh, not from Ham, not from Japheth, okay? And, of course, like I said, Revelation 22, verse 16. Revelation 22, verse 16. I, Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And Bibles, NIV, ESV, Nitwit living in the trash, whatever, will in Isaiah 14, 12, take out Lucifer and put morning star there. And then they'll link this verse giving you, who's using the Bible and not the scriptures, to believe that Jesus was the one who was fallen from heaven. He came of his own accord. Okay? Friend, I don't care who you are. If you, you, you need what's perfect, the authorized version of the scriptures. The Bibles tell you that Jesus fell from heaven. The Bibles, the majority of them, tell you that in Isaiah 14, that is Jesus. That's of Satan. That's calling God a liar. You need the scriptures, son. <coughs> Not a Bible that came from Rome. The scriptures that came from God. That's what you need, okay? But now, Ephesians 4. Day star. Yes, Yes, Ephesians 4. Yes, day star. Bright and morning star. Yes, that's Jesus. You're right, brother. Amen, amen. Amen. And the only ones who would try to refute that would be someone using the Bible, not the scriptures. Like these stupid, these Jesuit trained cemeterians at that church building while the Greek says, the Greek, oh, shut up. Shut up. Ephesians 4. Verses 17 on to verse 24. Oh, that's not, not five. 17 on to 24. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Perfect example, the easy believest. I'm saved because I think I'm saved. I save myself by my own belief. Therefore, I'm justified to try to exposit scripture and dropping F-bombs along the way, boasting about it. 
It's bad when a, a devil rebukes a devil plainly over that. Okay, that's bad. Okay? <clears throat> Having the understanding, departing from evil, darkened. Well, all things love for you. Hey, the more I sin, the more grace I got. Hey, I'm not even under the morality. The morality of the law. I'm not even under that. See, free gracers, antinomianists, they, they, they don't like God telling them what to do. Catholics don't like God telling them what to do. That's why they listen to their priest. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. And it's a willful ignorance, by the way, which is stupidity. Who being past feeling have given themselves over onto lasciviousness. Uh, license to sin, the gods of lasciviousness will be in the description box, of course. Of course. Uh, uh, wait, wait, did I write that down? No, no, I didn't. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. Okay. Never mind. Let's continue. Okay? <laughs> Let's continue. To work all uncleanness with greediness. Like I said, that, uh, that the one video uh, where the, the, the bloke, and bloke is supposed to be a compliment. I'm using that sarcastically. That guy is not a bloke. He's a devil. But he, he, he was showing this one Dave guy just trying to express his scripture and cursing. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. Trinitarians. If so, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus and the Spirit of truth, he will lead you, guide you into all truth. Okay? And the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. The Lord is one who will guide you into all truth. Free gracers aren't saved. That ye put off. Put it off. Do evil. No. You have to make the right choice. Free will. Free will is without, throughout Scripture. If you didn't have free will, you would be a mindless robot. God doesn't want a robot. Okay? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, that Adamic nature, which has been relegated here, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit, lowercase s of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. God's not forcing you to do what he says. He never has. God does not work like that. That is the God of Calvinism. That is the God of coercion. God doesn't work that way. Putting on. You have to make the choice to do what he said. Salvation has nothing to do with you. Okay. You've gone the elect way. You were broken. He broke you of your self-righteousness. You've taken responsibility. Quit blaming others and you had the hell scared out of you. And in that terrifying moment, Lord save me. He saves you and seals you. You're, it's not your salvation to lose. You can't lose what's not yours in the first place. But see, if we deny him, he will deny us. you got to make the right choices. You've got to decide. God, God lets you know. He, here. You want to know how to walk as a saint today? Here it is. The authorized version of the scriptures. Rightly divided. Salvation changes in the dispensation, friend. Okay? Right here. You've got to make the right choices. Now remember, Paul couldn't do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But I, 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 have y'all have noticed... Where 
concentrating on Peter, but we're also going a lot to Paul. There are those out there who say that Paul was a false prophet, but they elevate Peter, showing you that they're Catholics. Because to the Catholic, hey, <laughs> Peter was the was a pope. And Peter was never a pope. <laughs> okay, that, that's heresy. Okay. Let's see, there are those out there. There's that one channel, Trusting JC, who exalts Peter because he's a Catholic. He's a coadjutor. But they call Paul a false prophet. And I've heard, like, um, some say that the book of James was the James rebuttal or refuting <coughs> Paul as a false prophet. I've heard that before, but yet <coughs> we're seeing Peter and Paul coinciding with each other. And remember, after the conference, the Jerusalem conference in Acts 15... They all came out preaching what was revealed unto Paul. Have you noticed that? We're, we're concentrating on Peter, but we're going to and fro for, with, uh, we're back and forth with Paul. And that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And while we're here, Ephesians 6, 11 on 20. Put on, oh, let's pretend. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That's you. Making the right choices. Just as you make the choice to justify, well, all things are lawful for me in worship on December 25th. Great example. You have to make the right choice. You can because God's in you and you have his word. Apart from God in you and apart from this, you can't do anything right. I think you can. How? Oh, but you can't. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. The instant in season, out of season. You know, you can wear the helmet. It protects your head, sure. What about the breastplate? Hmm? What about the things that's covering your loins, huh? What about on your feet, huh? <laughs> that'll, that'll protect your toe from dropping a couch on it. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? But, yeah. What good is body armor? If you only put on part of it. Well, protect that one part, yeah, but you know, like, uh, you got a helmet on. It's like, okay, so I'm going for the, head, the chest. Oh, you got something on the chest? Okay, but not on the head? Okay. What about the foot? I ain't going to kill you. But you distract them, you stomp on their foot, they bend over, maybe the helmet goes off and plop. And we won't even get involved in a loin shot. Take your breath away, huh? Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace with God. Not peace with sin, which the antinomian is free grace offers. Above all, and so does Catholicism, because hey, all you gotta do is you go to your Jesuit priest, do a work, you know, Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom, or whatever, and then you're done, and pay a small fine, which they still institute today, uh, and then you're done. Yeah. Anyway. 
Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, knowing that you are saved and that you will go to heaven when you die. Most Catholics don't know because that's a sin of presumption. I met the one um, Roman Catholic, Hispanic woman. It's like, yes, I do because I have Jesus in my heart. It's like, yeah, but the Lord shut me up. He wouldn't let me do anything. Because, but then again, I was on their territory passing off tracks anyway. <laughs> you know, there was, you know, it's like that thing. It's like, I, there's so much I could have said, but the Lord's like, Brad, shut up. Get out of here. But okay. Anyway. And take the helmet of salvation. Uh, read First John 5 sometimes. We are to know. And Catholicism, even in their catechism, calls you knowing that you're saved is a sin of presumption. Okay? And the sword of the capitalist spirit, which is the lowercase w, word of God. Saint. Always have a sword on you. Like I said, you keep it in your car. Hey, 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 brother, you know, if you're in Wally World and something happens and you can like, come out to the car and I can show you and they go, good. Praise the Lord. Great. Good. How much better? Though, in the heat of the moment, you pull out the sword. You might like... Well, I don't want to be made to look an idiot. I understand that. But the Lord's in you, and if that's an orchestrated thing where he's going to, he wants to use you as his ambassador, his emissary, and you you got the sword, it's like, okay. It's like, you know, the bullet prayer thing, it's like, oh, Lord, I don't know what to do. Here, let this show me, and then... And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the capital S spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And what are we reading to here? Verse 20. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So, what are we seeing here? What are we seeing? And we, uh, Colossians 3, but before we read Colossians 3, let's look again at First Peter, uh, 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 19. Not Hebrews, Brad. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. We have a, also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well to take heed, remember, as unto a light that shineth in a dark, dark place, until the day dawn and the day star Arise in your hearts. We are children of the day. We are to make the decision to walk as children of light. Day star, arise in your hearts. Who is Peter addressing? Saints. What is he telling them? Remember, take heed. How often you and I can forget that, brother? Is this the same as 1 Corinthians 4, verses 100, verse 5? No, I don't think so. Obviously, he's addressing saints. Hmm? Paul, what he discussed in uh, 1 Corinthians 4, verses 100, verse 5, is plain to anyone who uh, has the Father within them. He's talking about salvation. This, no, this is in terms of putting on, making the right choices. Colossians 3. 800 verse 17. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, 
filthy communication out of your mouth, like trying to exposit scripture and cussing. I <laughs> takes my breath away. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man. Again, <laughs> I just I hope this irritates the you know what out of you, uh, Scott. God's not forcing you to do the right thing. He's not. He's not. Nor is Satan forcing you to do the wrong thing. He's not. Wouldn't it be great sometimes if he did? That would sure take a lot of sting out of it. But see, when you willfully make the right decision, that makes the Lord happy. If God wanted a robot, he would have made us robots. If God wanted controlled people, none of this would have happened. <laughs> None of this would have happened. Okay? And have put, verse 10 in Colossians 3. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is, and what are we reading to? Verse 17. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Now see, this is talking in terms of salvation because God is not a respecter of persons today. I'm a Japhethite. There are those of you that are Hamites. Those of you that are Shemites. I'm a Hellenoian. There are, I know brethren in Missouri, North Dakota, Georgia, Ohio, um, uh, 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 what, what did I say? Oregon, Jersey, Florida. Uh, what's uh, what's uh, what's the one? Boston, not Boston. Oh, uh, whatever. West Virginia. Okay. All right. All right. There's there's Americans. There's Canadians. There's Mexican. There's Croatian. There's British. There's French. There's Norwegian. Okay. There is distinction. But to see today, there is no distinction in salvation. It's the common salvation common to all, to Canadians, eh? to Americans, to Mexicans, to Puerto Ricans, to Slavic, to um, Spaniards, to uh, Egyptians, to Mongols, to Russians, and so on and so on and so forth. Okay? <clears throat> there is no distinction in salvation. Culturally, come on. Come on. E even you guys can, you know, you lost people can, fit, but, you know, Brad, there's a, culturally, yes, in salvation, there is no distinction. Today. Today. Got rightly divided the word of truth. And, oh, look at that, verse 12. There again, making the right choice. Put on, therefore, Paul tells us, as we have looked at thus far, and there's more than this, to put on. To put on. Not that Christ himself did it for you. We're not talking about salvation. We're talking about sanctification. We're talking about how you serve the Lord. You have to make the right decision. Okay? He's not holding a gun in your head. May it, forcing you to do what's right or wrong. You have to do the right thing according to him. You have to make that choice. We have free will. So we see, put on therefore, as the elect of God, you went the elected way of the cross, that's what that means. That ain't Calvinism or black Hebrew light Israel, whatever. Okay? Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now those who are saved are the ones who Christ forgave. This is telling us that for even lost people, uh, forgive and forget. They're lost. They, they are their own God. They're of their father, the devil. That's why you don't keep going back to the pan, brother, 
that constantly burns your hand. Okay? Forgive and forget. How many times do you need your hand burnt before you don't go back to it? And see, the devils are aware that you will go back, so they, they, they put on the facade, and they come out in the venom, and then the whole process is repeated. Stop it. Stop it, and I hope you have. Okay? And above all these things, put on charity, self-sacrifice, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, which is the first thing mentioned, psalms. And you look in the psalms, musicians, plural, is in scripture. Musicians, singular, isn't. Brad in uh, King James Bible. Uh, check. Check the verse there, pal. Musician singular. You look on King James Bible online. It says uh, Psalm, what, 6 verse 1, right? But yet you read verse 1, musician isn't in there. It's in the heading above the text of Scripture. Musicians, plural, is in the text of Scripture. Yes. Musician singular isn't. It's in the heading above before the text of scripture. Gotta watch out for that. Okay? Gotta watch out for that. But let the word of Christ dwell with you richly, dwell in you, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. A lot of the songs were meant to be sung. Whatsoever ye do, do what <laughs> whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. How you serve the Lord reflects him. And when you're deciding to do what is contrary to the Lord, Verses 20 on to 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Well, like, if you want, you know, you got to take our advanced class. Kent Helvin, you know, we, we cover a lot of this in our college course. You know, you got to pay money uh, to get the college course. Or you got to give money and we'll send you this book. Or give money and we'll give you this DVD debt so you can. No. No. If you want the truth, here, buy my book when you have the book. Anyway, it's 21. For the prophecy came not in old time, meaning before the current dispensation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now this one's pretty simple. This one's pretty simple. <clears throat> Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Verses 12 on to 16. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. I love this verse. This is why I don't fret man. Who art thou that shouldest... Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass. That's why I don't fear men or women. That's dust. That's dirt just like I am. Okay, you, you might be a lot bigger. You might know how to put, do a triangle lock or, or a drop toll hold or something like that. Or you might know some ah, Kung Fu Louis. Let's see that stop a bullet, okay? Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, other than that, you, you're just dirt. Let the Lord be your dread. Let him be your fear. What are you afraid, are you afraid of a man for? See, and that's what the Jesuits do. They will have you be afraid of them. Because they won't just kill you. They'll go after your family. The Jesuits never forgive nor forsake. And forget us that the Lord thy maker, and forget us the Lord thy maker, that has stretched forth the heavens, 
and laid the foundations of the earth, and hath and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? And like the Lord said to a, a Pilate, thou couldst do nothing to me unless it was given to you from above. God's like, why are you afraid of them? You need to be afraid of me. Okay? They're going to die just like you. Yeah, he might be bigger. Yeah, he might know some more things. But at the end of the day, he is going to rot, decompose, turn back to dust. From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. That's why we should never fear man. Okay. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his breath should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have put my words in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Hmm. Under the law, where eternal security was not there, death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened, faith and works. Okay? Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. 4 out of 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. One would to argue free, uh, free will would come, well, Jeremiah didn't have free will. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He could have denied. Yes, he could have. And we also see in the book of Jeremiah where he decides to shut up. And he's like, okay, I won't make mention of the Lord anymore. What happens? The fire burned him. He, he, could, he was compelled. He couldn't help it. He had to. Not at gunpoint, but it's like, okay, I know the truth. I'm seeing this stuff going on. I, you know, I'm compelled by my own to speak, even though it was the Lord who gave it to him. Jeremiah had free will. Don't be, don't fall for that when they come to the sea. Jeremiah didn't have free will. Yes, he did. He could have denied that. Yes, he could have. Oh, I, he probably would have had a woo, woo, rough time. But he could have. Done. God, again, see, the minute you start claiming God is coercive, God forces you. Then, hey, I guess it is like that idiot Scott said, huh? I guess it ain't your faith after all. I guess you are elect, aren't you? Because of your skin color. <laughs> Let's continue. <clears throat> but the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go in all that I shall send thee. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, Thou shalt speak. Whatever he says, that's what you speak. Don't trust me. Don't trust me. Trust this. Be not afraid in their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Ezekiel 2. Ezekiel 2. <clears throat> 3 and 8. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Isaiah, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord thy God. Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, 
for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And now, son of man, you're not afraid of them. As we already covered in Isaiah, why are you afraid of a man who will die? Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, briars and thorns come in and choke the word that it be unfruitful, things of the world, cares of this life. And a soldier mustn't be concerned with the affairs of this life. That doesn't mean be flippant, but you don't get engulfed with that. Okay? <clears throat> and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Thou shalt speak my words unto them. My words. Where are the Lord's words? The authorized version of Scripture. Then when I've gotten a few emails, um, you know, it's like, all you do is read Scripture. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, yeah, 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 that's the sharpest knife in the drawer, are you, pal? Yeah, and uh, you know, it's like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and thou speak my words unto them. Whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And look across on the page, uh, Ezekiel 3, 1 and 7. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness, which the word of the Lord will be to you after first it is a suffering to you. See, the word of God in the way this works has to first be unto you a suffering before it can become a glory. That's why the heretics avoid Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18. Because that's there to chaff you, to rip the skin off your hide, boy. Yeah. He said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. The prophet is without honor, save in his own country and is in his own house. Not too many, I love this verse, not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou, sh thou cannot understand. <laughs> Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. You look in the book of Acts. How the Grecians, the Gentiles, when the when they started going to the Gentiles, you know, it was like, oh, they were they they ready for it. But a lot of the Jews were obstinate. <coughs> See, they're the self righteous and the contrite. Christians, you know, they already think they are. So when a saint comes to them, you know, dude. You're in a phallus house, you just believe and receive, and you believe in one God and three persons. Uh, can we talk? I'm saved. I'm better than this. Blah, blah, blah. I've done that. Okay. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. <laughs> I 
I know when you when the Lord uses you and you just the the the, 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 the fences are up and the the gates come down and these people you 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 stand shoulder to shoulder and it's like see that okay that's what God says of you okay and you give them that and they just won't hear it they're not rejecting you see this they're not rejecting you they're rejecting the Lord who you represent unless you're catering to their flesh like all the heretics do keep that in mind remember take heed Amos 7 Amos 7 verses 14 and 15 under the law before the death burial and resurrection no eternal security faith and works Holy Ghost could come and go come and go wasn't a permanent resident yet then I answered Amos and said to Amaziah I was no prophet neither was I a prophet's son but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit and the Lord took me as I followed the flock and the Lord said unto me go prophesy unto my people Israel and as we have seen already you know what what we're working off of here and for us second Peter chapter 1 verse 21 for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man we just looked at four examples of this we could have done, done a lot more but holy men holy set apart separated men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost and in that dispensation the Holy Ghost could come and go come and go wasn't permanent as is today let's see what's the contrast See, we've just looked at examples of the person who has the Lord within them. We are to speak whose word? His words. His words. Don't trust me. Trust this. Trust this. I'm speaking to you His words. All you're doing is reading scripture. I did genius. Hello. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm speaking to you his words. That's why when you run into these guys and they, they, they have like one verse of scripture and then they go on for two hours off of... Now, yeah, you can do stuff like that off of a verse of scripture. But scripture, scripture, scripture. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That, 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 when I've encountered that, <laughs> again, you ain't the sharpest knife in the door, are you? No, you're not. You, you want to hear. Who are you? Get, get out of here. You distracted me. <clears throat> and I wasn't a brother or a sister, by the way. But yeah, it's like that, that's. <clears throat> Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Okay? The word, the scripture. Yeah, genius. Yeah. All you're doing is reading scripture. <laughs> you ain't sharp as snap in the door, are you? Is there something wrong with you? Or do you not want the scriptures, God, you know, what God wrote, what God our Father wrote, you don't want the scriptures chaffing your hide, do you? Do you? But what's the contrast? You and I as saints, we're to, we're, we are to speak his word, the scripture. Scripture! Okay? Yeah, that, yes, that's, yes. We, we speak, as you can see, as we're doing here now. But, 
Like I said, we are to preach his word. And in Jeremiah 23, the contrast is, and this you see in the free gracer and the Cal, uh, uh, Calvinist and the Catholic philosophy, man's wisdom. Nothing but philosophy and man's wisdom. Especially with the free gracers. Especially with the Catholics. Okay? Because free grace is a daughter of the whore, Roman Catholicism. Okay? Just like Calvinism is. Okay? Jeremiah 23. See, we as saints today, we are to speak, that's prophesying today. The Lord in me, speaking to you, his word to you, through me. That's prophesying today. Through the completed canon of Scripture. Before that, under the law, the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go. Different dispensation. Jeremiah 23, 13-23. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err, or to err. Baal. The sun cookie, the sun god, Catholicism. And all her horse daughters. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Don't worry about it. The more you sin, the more God's grace is abounding. You're not under the, even, the morality, even the morality of the law. The morality of it, you're not even under. So, when you're not even under the morality, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. If you're not even under the morality of that. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, dude. Well, I guess just go right ahead, right? Master your own soul, right, pal? Sweetie pie. Huh. Yes, they strengthen also the hands of the evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all they are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. What does that mean? Romans 1. Romans 1. I will feed them with wormwood. What does that mean? Yeah, I'll show you. Romans 1. 24 and 28. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Gave them up. Yeah, because in verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and fool says in his heart, there is no God, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man is the first thing mentioned there. And to birds, you know, that stupid little trinity bird, and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, verse 15 in Jeremiah 23, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood. Feed them. Could it be that these prophets already made their decision in their head and in their heart? And the Lord's like, okay, you're going to do that? Fine, go ahead, here. Go ahead. You you like Pharaoh. Everybody likes to point to Pharaoh. God hardened his heart. Dude, even atheists can back this up. 
The pharaohs thought that they were actual big G gods. They were worshipped as if they were big G gods. Atheists can back that up themselves. They can. The pharaohs thought they were big G gods. They ain't, obviously. So Pharaoh's heart was hard. Yeah, he thought he was a god. Woohoo! The antinomianist. You think you are God. The uh, sinless perfection twit. You think you are God. For this cause, oh wait, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped to serve and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Hey, you lesbianas. It says man shall not lay with mankind. It doesn't say anything about what. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of that error with a C, person, place, or thing, that recompense with a C, noun, S is a verb, okay, of their error which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, Stephen Anderson, because he is a closet sodomite himself, will say that sodomites can't be saved. And no, no, God can save anybody. <laughs> Does it make you angry, Scott? God isn't forcing you to do what's right. God's not forcing his salvation on you. Comprende? Comprende? Okay? Gave them over. God can save anybody. To say God can't save anybody like Stephen Anderson does, like the Calvinists do, because Stephen Anderson's reprobate doctrine is basically a mirror of the Calvinistic reprobate doctrine. That there are some that God elects to go to hell. No. No. They make their choice. And they go so far along in that choice that they reach a point where they can't come back. Not that God can't save them. God can save anybody. But not at gunpoint. You got the picture, right? Good. 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 That is very good. All right? And now, uh, what did I write down here? Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, <laughs> which is doctrine for us today, Mr. Fig. You heretic. Shame, too. Nice guy. Second Thessalonians 2, 10 on the 12. Uh, refresh our memories. Jeremiah 23, 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I will feed them with wormwood. Make them drink. The water of gall, for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Second Thessalonians 2, 10 and 12. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness of them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now see, this is something that crosses dispensational lines. When you reject truth, what else is there? Error. And when you openly, knowingly, and brazenly reject truth, and I say it myself, because I just, well, fine. That's what you want to believe there, sugar pie, sweetie britches. Okay, here, go ahead. You just gobble up all the nonsensical, heretical dung you can, and go along, have your best life now. That crosses dispensational lines. Okay? <laughs> you want the lie, whatever that is, God will give it to you. 
You don't want to believe the truth? God will oblige you. Careful what you wish for. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, and Ezekiel, <laughs> Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel 13, verses 1 on to verse 6. I'm in Ezekiel today. Uh, in my daily devotion with our Father. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel, that prophesy and say, on, say thou unto them, that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Out of their own hearts. They're not of the Lord. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. They speak of fleshly matters. And those who are fleshly and don't want God telling them what to do, just believe and receive. Go on, don't worry about it. The more you do, the better it is, actually. You're not, you're not, I, I, this is so, it's full of wonder to me. You're, these guys preach and teach that you're not even bound under the morality, the morality of the law. They are a law unto themselves. Thus said the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own lowercase s spirit and have seen nothing. Nothing. Seen nothing. Because you're not of the Father. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert that dig underneath the foundations. You know, uh, in, in uh, Song of Songs, chapter 2, take us the foxes, the little foxes, you know, the spoil of vines. They dig the little foxes that is being referenced here. They, they're, here's a wall. They would dig downward under the wall to put to get under the foundation. So if you're getting, if our foundation is Jesus, someone is digging under that foundation to what? Boot the door and climb up some other way, be a thief and a robber. Get it? Okay. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the day in the battle in the day of the Lord. You know, teaching saints to put on the whole armor of God, but rather justify yourselves. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope. That they would confirm their word, making them twofold more the child of hell than themselves. <laughs> you know. I called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. And who was the, who led him along? Elmer. Sweet little talk show host from Canada. Led that poor guy along, but he's not a poor guy. He knows exactly what he's doing. Right. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Catholicism, free grace, Calvinism, modern Christianity and all her flavors of denominations. Because as the Muslim will rightly say, well, you, you, Christ is divided. You got Baptist, you got Anabaptist. You got Methodist, you got Episcopalian, Presbyterian, you have King James Bible believing Christian, you got Pentecostal. <laughs> Christ is divided, dude. You're right. Their Christ is divided. But the Christ who is isn't. Bravo. Jeremiah 23, picking up at verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Because no one wants to hear, no one wants to hear that you're not good. No one wants to hear that unless um, you do what the Lord says, you're going to hell. And when you get right down to it, man, 
in general. That, that was the whole thing. That's why we're in this. Man doesn't want God telling them what to do. It's the red button theory. The red button theory. See that red button? Don't touch that button. Whatever you do. What happens? What happens? You want to touch it immediately. Yeah, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. There was a red button in the Garden of Eden. God said, don't eat it. Don't eat it. You got to look at that one. You got to look at that, 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 that. You got all this. But see that? See that? See that one? Don't eat it. The red button. Long come Satan. Yeah, God said. Hey, guess what? You eat that fruit. You touch that red button. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? You'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can chart your own thing. You can decide what is right and wrong. It's the red button theory. And our flesh, because sin has been relegated to that, read Romans chapter 8, we instinctively want to touch that red button, don't we? You lie and your breath stink if you deny it there, buddy. Our flesh does. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, ye shall have peace. Like the antinomianists. The peace that they offer you is peace with your sin. The grace that they offer you is a license to sin. Not the grace of God who, of the God who is. Okay? And they say unto everyone that walketh in the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Dude, that verse right there... <laughs> To you antinomianists, that's exactly what you do. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. Like we've said before. They want to look at me, look at me, look at me. They want to be, hey. They tag you and all this stuff. And they, they do all this stuff to get everyone's attention. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off, meaning God's bigger than you think? God, you're not going to hide anything from God? Okay? All right? All right? Acts 16. We're almost done. Acts 16. Acts 16, 6 on the 10. Men were moved, uh, uh, men spake as moved by the Holy Ghost in this dispensation. Acts 16, 6 on the 10. Now when they had gone through Pyr Pyrgia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. For example, when I was putting tracts out by the Catholic Church, and that his evil Hispanic woman came and um, costed me. I don't think the Lord really wanted me putting tracts out there. Why? Vanity. Vanity. Okay. Like near the uh, driver's license area, in the back. You know, I was putting tracks out there the one day, and the guy's like, don't do that. And I'm like, uh, excuse you, pal? Uh, you got a gun or badge? Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, he wasn't expecting that. Yeah, especially in a public place like that. You know, I'm putting out tracks, and don't do that. Excuse me? Let me see your badge and gun there, buddy. Afterwards, it's like, Brad, yes, Lord. 
Maybe you didn't want me to do that, but the other part. That, but the point is, you know, you gotta be you gotta be open to the Lord's leading, and compare with whatever you're getting with Scripture. After they were come to Mysa, they had stayed to go into Bithynia, but the capitalist spirit suffered them now. Not, excuse me, not, not. And they passing by Mysa came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to, uh, appeared to Paul in the night. The Jews require a sign. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. After he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11. 1 Peter 4, 10 on to 11. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, not how you are trained by man in homiletics or by rockmen. If any man minister, let him do it as it let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Not going to uh, smoke and mirrors using little psychological manipulative tricks. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, because when somebody gets a successful ministry, it becomes their ministry. And I've done this, I've done this. Then they take it upon themselves to uh, rub things. Again, Kent Helvin, lost devil Jesuit. Perfect example of that. You know, taking it upon himself to get your money. And people actually still promote that guy. Not as much because he's on like, what, five, six wives now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a perfect example. There are some other people we could mention, but we're not going to. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that because that one hurts for some of you. Ephesians four, seven on to sixteen. See how we did that? Huh? Ephesians four, seven on to sixteen. But unto every one of us is grace is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Brother Alexander B. Hartley has a gift to use analogy far greater than I did. He can take an, uh, a real-life experience and weave it into a very efficient means of preaching. Okay? He can. Um, I don't have that, okay? I, I mean, I have the experiences, but to use those as analogy in the way he does, I don't have that. Okay? I don't have that. I'm, I'm not able to do that. Um, you know, okay, just an example. You know, there are other brethren and sisters out there who have these things that they are more proficient at than others. That doesn't make one better than another, but let's continue reading. Now, that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above, the, above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers different offices within the body of Christ. Why? 
This is what we mustn't forget. Like so many of these years and years and years, Christians seem to readily, conveniently forget. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. The gift that you have, look at me, come here brother. The gift that you have has been given to you to share it with others. I understand sometimes you get reservations. I don't know, Brad. I, I, I'm not. There are brothers out there. I, I, one brother from New Jersey. He, he has a gift of kindness that um, I, I sometimes wish I had. Some of the things that brother does. You know. Our uh, brother from Ohio. One of the sweetest brothers you will ever meet. If you ever do meet a sweetheart. Sweetheart. Uh, that guy, that dear brother, he, he knows a little bit more than, um, not that he lets on, but that he um, he knows a lot. He, that brother from Ohio, he knows quite a bit, especially about the book of Revelation. And um, he's not, you're not going to, one of these heretic guys is not going to lead him astray. Okay? All right? The point is, as with here what we're looking in the scripture, there are those of us in the body that are allotted for different things within the body. For what cause? So that I can wear a badge and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. Oh, nay, nay. But to give for others. For other people, not yourself. You, in turn, will be fed. Yes, you will. But see, again... When you make your being fed the number one priority and boast of why you should do this, why you should give to me, why you should do, why I, 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 me, me, me. You're seeing that, brother. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Not one that is sinlessly perfect. That won't happen until we're dead. Okay? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unfortunately, while we're in the flesh, our spirit and soul are in this skin suit. Until that happens, flesh is going to get into the way. I've mentioned, and I'll, I'll name this guy again, divisive inerrantist. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd like to start talking to that man again. He was deceived by a lying, satanic Canadian. Okay? And unfortunately, um, kind of gotten a little too deep within a certain clique of people, that whatever. I, I, I'd like to be able to speak with that man again. I would. I would. I really would. Um, a cordial man, um, well-read man, you know, I, I would. But see, he thinks I'm a heretic because his other people told him. Especially that wicked Canadian. Okay? But unfortunately, and it is unfortunate, um, that probably won't happen. Why? And that's because of flesh. That's because of flesh. There are people out there who I wish I could have contact again with. Oh, um, oh, what was the one guy? Oh, I forget his name. Um, um, anyway, he, he would, he would do, he would upload Ruckman videos and then his channel would be taken down. Um, uh, I forget what his name was. I'd like to talk to that guy again. There are people I would like to have converse with again, just to be, you know. But verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, 
whereby they lie and wait, whereby they lie and wait, wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him, into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. According to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. There's no insignificant part within the body. We think the feet are more feeble, but the feet are needful. So, to recap, no, brother. I do not think that, I mean, with what you quoted me, because 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, okay, who is he addressing? He's addressing saints. And the light shineth in the dark place until the day dawn. He's addressing saved people. But again, how often do we saints forget willfully? And the day star arise in your hearts, making the right choices. I do believe these are different, brother. I know we went roundaboutly to answer that, but we needed to get this context with it to make the point. So that is a thank you, brother. Thank you, dear brother, for that beautiful question. And that's going to be it for this video. Again, uh, dear brother, uh, your question about the Garden of Eden, Lord willing, that will be answered uh, as soon as possible. Um, like I said, that's something that will be beneficial for the body of Christ in a, in a whole. So, um, thank you. That's going to be it for today. Thank you so much, dear brethren, for watching this. If you do, um, please keep us in your prayers. Please keep your servant in prayer. Um, it, I'm, my health is getting worse. My health is getting worse, and the past couple of days have been atrocious. That's why I didn't upload on uh, Monday. <laughs> well, yesterday was also rainy, but also, too, you know, tracking Tuesday. And got more tracks! <laughs> but um, that's why, yeah. So, thank you, brethren. I love you. We will see you in the next video.